Hey everybody, uh, you are watching me, Jason Sobel, start to paint with gouache over a Predator drawing that I had done. Uh, I kind of fast forwarded through a lot of the background, I did most of the background at uh, my school studio, uh, so I did not have my normal camera set up, and here we got jumping onto more of the, uh, the final painting which was done at home over the Predator himself, or itself. Uh, so I did most of that background at my school studio where I teach by day, and then I was working on the rest of it at home at night. Uh, in this particular case, I drew the Predator and a little bit of the background detail in a uh, just a light green Copic, uh, excuse me, light green Prismacolor uh, color pencil, and then moved on to working gouache. Uh, some people asked what is gouache or could ask what is gouache uh, I was asked previously that's why I say asked past tense but also uh, people out there in YouTube world could ask what gouache is gouache is a water-based opaque paint uh, water-based meaning that it, it moves with water it is built with water but the gouaches that I use are definitely a, uh, a tube based so they're more wet than some and if I add water to it, it can start to really desaturate and really start to get really light like a watercolor. Or if I paint with it as it is, it stays super thick. I tend to do a little bit of both. Uh, for the most of the foliage in the background, I went really thick with it. So I just kept it uh, right out of the tube and then immediately started to paint with it. And then uh, layered it up. So similar to an acrylic paint. I could do a lot of layering and allow it to, uh, upon drying, build up. Or if I went into it while it's still drying, it will blend a little bit on my canvas. Uh, or in this case, a, a just an illustration board. I used a white illustration board. Uh, with the background, again, as I said, I did a mostly like pretty thick, pretty uh, dry gouache paint. So it was more like an acrylic. But with uh, a lot of what you're watching me do with the Predator himself, I did the paint mostly uh, water-based. And there will be some parts that I let up pretty thick. So here we are, you know, moving around a little bit, trying to get a lot of the, skinner, the skinny areas of his skin first. So when I say skinny, I don't mean thin. I mean just saying skin with adding the E at the end. So sorry about that. A lot of that skin. So I'm using a, uh, a creamier yellow and making that creamier yellow water down uh, a little bit and I'll be blending in with some beige and some white in order to uh, build up the more appropriate tone for it because it's not really yellow it's definitely more of a creamy yellow so again the yellow paint with a little bit of white a little bit of uh, gold where necessary as you can see me doing now with the foot getting in there with just a little bit of that, that gold and that brown to darken up the areas that need to be darker so you're going to see me jump kind of back and forth a lot in this piece and use that gouache. Um, do I think there's any difference in painting technique between gouache and watercolor or gouache and acrylic? The answer is absolutely. There are some really pretty direct similarities. Uh, so let's go through the, uh, the similarities and then we'll go into the differences. So like right now, what you can see uh, with the background, it look heavy, you can see strokes and they go over. That would be one of the similarities that the gouache can have with acrylic. Uh, so again, really nice and heavy and you can just lay down that stroke, let it dry and it's gonna be super opaque. For those of you who are not familiar with the word opaque, it means hard to see through, it, it blocks out light. Uh, so you can't see through it and see what's behind it. But for uh, the similarities with watercolor, just add just a touch of water and it can get really light and move very easily. On a watercolor paper or a traditional uh, painting paper, you add that water to the gouache and it will just really explode with movement like a good watercolor would, which allows you to get more, uh, more natural, more hazy effects. Uh, similar to that, uh, his right arm, but on the left side of the, sc of the screen there, it just gets really light. But then when you go in, because it's wet, it will blend super fast uh, because the water will make the color move with, e with the other color around it. So, for example, going over that yellow with a little bit of a 
a, a creamy, light brown, almost a gold, uh, it will all work together. It will start to slowly blend. So this is definitely wet. You can see the shine on the, uh, the paint as I'm putting it down. That is not shine from the gouache. That is shine from water. But you can also see it, the water evaporate pretty quickly. Some people have an issue with the gouache evaporating, or as the water evaporates, excuse me, if they're painting on a paper, the gouache will, e not again, I keep saying the gouache will evaporate, the water will evaporate and the gouache will remain, but if too much water evaporates, meaning you've used too much water, so you have an excess, then as soon as that water starts to evaporate, the color from the gouache itself will have no place to go. The, the water, which was the only thing binding it to the paper, is gone. So sometimes people have experienced uh, certain gouaches becoming almost like a, a chalky a residue that just leaves the paper quickly. Uh, one of the ways I avoid that is by doing a lot of blending with uh, the water-based uh, gouache or a, a wet gouache, more like watercolor, to the thicker, more like the acrylic. So by using both, I avoid a little bit of that. Uh, how much water should you use? How much water shouldn't you use? That is really such a matter of taste and a matter of technique and practice. So basically, there's, there's no substitute for that. So how again, this was all about how it is similar to these other things. Uh, how it is dissimilar to acrylic is that acrylic what I've seen is it, it just, no matter how much water you add, it will just go over everything else, but it just might be able to be more see-through. Um, I have not had that happen with gouache yet. I'm sure it could. So in my, I guess with my technique, that it, it is a little dissimilar. Acrylic is just so much heavier handed, even though gouache can be like that uh, without any water. I, I just, I, even Acrylic without water versus gouache without water is still heavier. But gouache is a really nice, opaque, similar, just not quite as thick. How it's different from watercolor, watercolor you have to add water just to make it move. Even wet watercolor out of the tube is similar to gouache right out of the tube, but it doesn't move anywhere. It won't go anywhere. Uh, gouache can move more. Every watercolor I've used right out of the tube, even really good uh, watercolors such as a Holbein or a Van Gogh uh, or you know just a number of other watercolors whose names escape me at the moment. I think I've used some Rembrandts before. So using, and Holbeins are my favorite by the way. I really love the Holbeins and uh, the, the Van Goghs are a close second. But they, they all require water to move. Whereas the gouache does not. It, it simply doesn't. You can move it uh, quickly without it because again it's, it is an opaque similar to an acrylic so what you're looking at there, uh, again, some of the differences and some of the similarities. Uh, ultimately, you have to really just get in there and play with it and practice with it. So my recommendation, if you like what I'm doing or you like seeing how I'm making this work here, then uh, practice it. All right, what I love about getting some of the detail in, and you can look at especially some of those golden browns, uh, because of the ability to layer with the gouache, you can layer and layer and layer and get darker and darker and darker. So it really helps with the intensities, really helps with the values. But notice that little bit of what we call a stippling. It's, it looks like spots, little dots. Uh, I'm not trying to go all, all pointillism like a George Surratt, although I do really enjoy Surratt's work. The idea is just to get some of those dots that are on the predator's skin. Uh, and give it that 
that effect that it has. It almost has these really cool organic uh, dots that are all over its skin. And uh, you can just see really the getting a, a dotty effect with my brown and then moving around with it and, and lightening it up and darkening it up as needed. So again, getting little dots with the brown, as you can see me doing there, and they, again, kind of wet, and then getting the straighter lines where I need it, but then really just going back in and doing more dots. And if I wet, if I wet that brown up a little bit and go to blend into the uh, more golden that's above it, it will blend pretty well. But again, that's, that's a really watered-down gouache right now. You can see it's a very similar to watercolor. So why would I do that? Because it's going to be lighter. So if I had gone it with no water, it would be super dark. But notice how light that is, that little speckling, and the, the stippling of dot over. It's very light because of the water. And then again, getting heavier brown right now. So what does that tell you? Less water. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching part one of the Predator in Gouache video. I'll be uploading part two shortly. Don't forget to check out the Instagram, Jason Sobel, and continue to keep an eye out for more videos. Thanks so much. Leave a comment.